Welcome to your daily Google News. You're about to watch an interview with the co-founder of High Level, Sean Clark, uh, who is easily, I think, one of the most disruptive and powerful leaders in the entrepreneurial space. I'm kind of obsessed with this guy. A lot of hero worship going on. You're going to see that in the interview. I pander excessively, but the guy deserves it. He's brilliant. He's humble. He's impactful. He's effective. He's really worth your attention. Um, I hope you enjoy. I got to tell you, I th I, I've never said this to your face. I only say it behind your back. <laughs> only behind my back. Uh, you're one of my entrepreneurial heroes. <laughs> like what you did with high level. And then and then also just who you are, because there's a bunch of people that have really good ideas. But I, I was on an interview with you recently and somebody introduced you as the founder of high level. And you instantly corrected them and you said, how about co-founder? Yeah, definitely co-founder, not founder. Yeah, dude, there's so few people that would spend so much energy correcting something that is an error in their favor but that that one thing that's kind of you on every level of analysis like always playing fair always trying to do the right thing always stopping the conversation to like clarify and i'm not trying to pander for a moment but i want anybody who's listening if you're if you want a, a leader to follow if you want somebody to look to like this is how you run an organization it's it's Sean fucking Clark, man. Like you oh, have, I, I think that's a little too too far. That's a bridge too far. But you I, go I with your humility. That, I just that, think just too, a good example. Too many people, I think. I, I don't know. I've just I've listened to a lot of people in life say how they did it all themselves, and I and having having had some a small amount of success, I, I have. First of all, I think they're all liars, but I mean, but, but, but that's not fair. I don't know them, but I will say that's definitely not true for myself. I certainly would not be here without many, 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 many people, my co-founders, my, you know, my customers, um, you know, my partners, you know, my affiliates, my, um, and my team, like all of these, like just so many people, um, have come into our world to help us out. And it would be just, it would be a foolish lie to say that somehow I'm, <laughs> It did all this. It's just, it's just, it's, it's laughable um, at best. Um, and that's before I even talk about things like luck and, and randomness and so forth and so on. So I don't know. And uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I wouldn't be here without the, the hard work and the love and the sacrifice of so many people. And so um, I just have to pay homage and respect to that at every turn. I love it, man. Let me ask you. So this is something I respect about you, but I do question the sustainability of it. If I go into the Facebook group right now, the high level Facebook group, am I going to see you answering support tickets still? Yeah. I mean, so it's a little, so it's a little different. So, so the way I think about this, right, is there's a team at every turn. So like there's, there's absolutely a team and a structure and KPIs on every channel. Right. But the, the reality is, is that I, I feel like my job is to sort of survey the land and just see if there's smoke from any place. And if that smoke is starting to turn into fire, because mm. my team's amazing. Um, but sometimes elevating something that is, it, 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 I can sort of just perceive, um, or I think, or my gut says that it's going to turn into a bigger issue or it is bigger already. And we are just, you know, cause people are going to say like, like X doesn't work, or this isn't happening for me or this or that. And I like to look at it and first say like, A, is this like a global issue that just maybe my support team doesn't yet know about? And can I race this to the top and get this someplace faster? That's one piece of it. The other piece is, you know, maybe something is not a not a bug or a, a something that's broken, but maybe it's just like a persistent issue I see. And then like, mm, you know what? I need to get this to the product team because yeah, while it's technically possible, it's not easy, it's not fun. And people are complaining about it a lot. That just tells me we're not doing our job to make it easy enough. So it's just sort of trying to help be like the forest through the trees guy. Yeah. So yeah, you'll absolutely see me in Facebook. And um, I think the way I do it is I try to solve the problem in the instant for the person, but I also try to glean the lesson away and solve the problem of problems. Yeah, yeah. Like how can I more globally? And then sometimes it's just education. Like, um, and we have a great, again, I have a great team. Like I get to tag product managers on posts and then they'll come in and actually a, answer questions and B, take the lessons away. So a lot of today's traffic direction for me, but it's super important to stay on top of all that. Yeah. Where's high level going? Like you've, you've conquered, in my mind, you conquered the marketing world as a SaaS product. Scale is only a matter of time from a breadth perspective. Yeah. You know, like the, the, the big bad AI bug is here. People can make code with their minds, blah, 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 yes. blah, blah. What yes. do you see from a directional standpoint as the next step? 
Well, I mean, so I think of AI as 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 is like every. I mean, the the thing is, as as a software engineer, I've 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 lived a world of abstraction, right? So you know, if you go, if you whatever code you write in today is fundamentally an abstraction on top of code that people used to use yesterday, that was harder. And so AI literally is just, in my mind, a, a, a radical expansion of that abstraction, but it's still placed in the same construct. And so it's like, I got a chainsaw, whereas before I was using handsaw. It, it just lowers the cost of production, but that should radically advance what's achievable from a practical standpoint. So you should be able to actually produce more things that faster that people need. So that that's great. That just means we can go faster. That's really what it comes down to. But I still think our mission hasn't changed radically much, which is how do we create a business model and how do we continue to disrupt an existing industry? Because I think of it as, you know, whether it's cheaper to produce or, I mean, because it was already getting cheaper to produce, but let's just say, let's say even tomorrow, let's say all software is free to produce. It certainly will not be free to run. It will not be free to support <laughs> and it will not be free to implement and create what it's really meant to do, which is it's actually meant to affect an outcome in the world that, that helps somebody in a tangible way and that is a concert of so many things, right? And in the past, that has been the domain of uh, highly funded startups that are very um, tribal and their whole mission is to own the world. They're very like me, me, like king of the hill kind of structure, right? And I think for us, it's about, wait, how do we disrupt that concept? How do we take the, the thing that was hard to create before the software and put it in the hands of the people so that we can arm them with the same tools and then therefore they can create the same type of businesses that were only the dominion of these like large radically well-funded startups before so to me it's all about continuing that disruption and ai if anything just makes that faster and easier for us you know what i love about your analogy as far as it being um, an abstraction is you have the coding language and then you have the code that's an abstraction of the coding language but what you've built high level is an abstraction that we get to use to code whatever it is that we want to. So it, it gets very meta very quickly. It's kind of like yeah. a Russian doll. Like yeah. it's an abstraction <laughs> on an abstraction on an abstraction. And then we get totally. to take it, those of us that don't know how to code and within the confines of what you provided in high level, do that again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that, the, I mean, I have I fell in love with software as a teenager because I, 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 I saw its ability to truly affect the real world. And I don't, and, and that fascination has not changed. What has changed is I've learned that, the software into itself does not create the impact. It's it's a tool that then needs to be harnessed by somebody who can learn it and who can add to it and who can put it into effect for someone else. And that hasn't changed. And I don't think AI will, um, I think AI will make that better and easier, but not, it's like it, everyone sort of sees some of these things as zero or one motions, but mm -hmm. the reality is it's, it's a percentage game. So it's really more like maybe it's 20% better or 30% better. And that's great. That just means you can do 30% more <laughs> than you were doing before for the same price, hopefully, um, and hopefully help other more businesses. And so for me, it's still about how can I help people build a business? How can I help people make money? And how can I do it in a way that harnesses the power of these tools um, and brings it together with their creativity to create that outcome? So to me, that's the same mission. But But I would say like just sticking to our entrepreneurial roots has been a big learning it's like i don't know like it's sort of like you know it's like uh when you not knowing what you know until you get there and then along the way having a lot of people tell you like what you know what does it look like when you grow up right and all of a sudden you're like well i guess i'm supposed to wear suits and ties every day or whatever i don't know like you know like people give you weird advice and uh and it's because that's just the common concept but then you start to do that and then you realize like you know what got me here was like because i wasn't or right. wasn't like that right and you're like, so why is it that I can't just keep being who I was? Yeah, if and I listen to everybody, I would have just rebuilt yeah. Infusionsoft. Well, yeah, or whatever, right? So, and so ultimately, I think it's just about realizing like, actually, you can scale this to whatever level you want, and you can still be that person you always were. Um, and you can still do things differently, even if you have really big numbers. And so that I think is more the learning that we, you know, we've created, certainly some things have to change. Don't get me wrong. It's impossible to keep up with everybody, but at the same time, um, you also can't be so rigid in your structure that you destroy creativity. And it's not just your creativity, by the way, it's your people's, right. I mean, your best people who are thriving under this old 
model, all of a sudden you thrust them into this new model. And at first they're all like you, they're like, okay, I guess that makes sense. I'll try it. And then all of a sudden you find out like, oh, well, we were going to do this amazing thing, but you see, there's this new policy and you're like, what the heck are you talking about? Policy schmolicy, like we're doing the great thing. So anyways, it's just going back and saying like, no, 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 no. We got to get rid of all that garbage. Um, and then, you know, people, you just find people do weird stuff. Like people have a tendency and I think it's human nature. Like if there's some like pain point they're running into, they'll be like, okay, how can I get rid of this pain? And that's just how they think. And then, but then if you look at the consequence of that, for example, um, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to take this pain. I'm going to transfer it to the customer and I make the customer bear the pain. Now they don't think of it like that, but that's the consequence of getting rid of the pain. So like easy examples, like um, we have these zoom rooms and, you know, people are like, well, how do you, you know, how do you like bring people into the zoom room? And you, you know, how do you, how do you like, you know, make sure that like you get the next person in the right order and this and that. And so someone's like, oh, I know we'll get zoom uh, conference edition or something. And what it does is you see, when you come in, it puts you in a queue and then it'll pull you out of the queue and, and then we can measure stuff better and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. But doesn't that mean like when I go into the zoom room, like I'm like on hold and I'm like hearing hold music or something. They're like, yeah, yeah, but you see, it's going to be so much. And I'm like, no, see, that's the problem right there. Like you've, sorry, denied because I want this experience where you walk in, like you're walking to a physical store. Like I always say, like, like the Verizon store, you walk in and someone greets you and they're like, hey, welcome to Verizon. How can I help you? And you're like, yeah, I'm here with my, you know, you sold me some crappy iPhone. It sucks. It doesn't matter what you say. They're like, oh, no problem. Let me get you all checked in. What's your phone number? Da, 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 da. And then you just hang out with other customers and like, and then they pull you in and they have like a check-in sheet. So they kind of know when you came in and, and then they have different categories for tech support and sales and this and that. Point is it works, right? It works on a really scaled basis. And I wanted to keep that model. So anyways, you'll learn that that's the tendency of people. So you end up having to go in and be like, sorry, you can't do that because it's our job to feel the pain, not to push it off on the customer just because it's easier. What a beautiful quote. It's our job to feel the pain. What features that are on the horizon are you most excited about? Or what maybe ask that question in a different way. What features should we be most excited about? I mean, the good news, is, well, so to me, it's about, we're, okay, so we started with marketing, like you said. And now we're really doing a couple of things. So to me, it's about making sure that we can be a fully a full operation system for every small business or every business. So um, there's a couple of things that I think are really big coming in. So um, this quarter, uh, communities is dropping, uh, estimates and proposals are dropping, um, uh, mobile uh, tap to pay on mobile is dropping, um, QuickBooks Online integration is dropping, and then in Q3 we're going to move on to ecom. Um, and the idea here is that Wait, e com is in like a Shopify alternative, yeah, yeah, like a Shopify. Yeah, 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 exactly. Total full e commerce. Wow. So, Does uh, Shopify no. Now, 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 not comparing ourselves to Shopify, obviously, because Shopify is big. But what we've learned in this journey, right, is that the there the, at every at every turn, there's a tool that is broader and deeper. Well, actually, not broader, deeper in in every feature we produce. But that's because they're targeting the the hundred percent. We're really targeting the 90%. And what we realize is that there's a very small number of features that you have to do in any given category to truly help almost everybody. And the people that are sort of pigeonholed in one environment, they they, they go really deep because A, I think that's just how it works, right? If you like right. say we're e-commerce, you're just gonna keep digging that hole deeper. But the reality is the deeper you go, there's just fewer and fewer people down there that you can help. Because the number of people that need these radically complex, sophisticated, niche fringe features, there's just one of those people. And the other problem with it is the deeper you go, the more you have to charge to actually dig that deep. So the, the, the more in depth in your analytics or the more in depth your whatever, you got to find someone who's willing to pay like 10x more because it takes a lot more work the, the, the farther down you go. Where are high level SaaSpreneurs finding the most success building their business? I know I have heard you say niche down on a local level before, is that still your answer? Or is there more? Absolutely. Because again, most of the people I'm talking to, I think this is the problem. I think that a lot of life is like, you turn on the TV and you see the people at the top. And, and I think there's this, this, this misperception here, which is that you don't, it, first of all, I don't actually agree that you need to get uh, to the top to be successful. In fact, I highly recommend, you know, Warren Buffett would always say, you know, I like to play games where the average person does all right. Um, because at, at worst, I think I'll do about average. And, and then, and as a result, I'd rather do all right. And, and, and I know that's not really sexy for most people, but the way I sort of think about it is, you know, how many people can I get to $300,000 as a single owner operator business at a 90% profit margin 
um, you know, in a year. So if I can do that, um, I feel really good because I've just put you at, you know, call it 80%, 85% of more than the average American makes by a pretty wide mile. And you should be able to afford a house. You should be able to afford a car, a, you know, a really fancy car, lots of vacations to Disneyland, all the stuff that I hope makes people happy. And will some people ra- take it radically higher than that? Absolutely. But I feel like if the most of the people I talk to, they aren't at that, that, that level yet. Call it 300 grand a year, let's just say. Um, they're not at that level yet. And so I want to help as many people as I can get to that level. Because the problem is if I tell you about people who are doing 10 million a year, it sounds super exciting from an advertising and marketing perspective. But those people had this journey that they had to go through. And at one point they made 10,000 a month and then, and then they made 30,000 a month and then they made 100,000 a month. And if you're not there, if I don't step you through it, um, I think it's disingenuous. And I think it's uh, I think it's it's uh, it's not it's not going to help you. So so yes, I would say focus on niche out on local. And the reason why is because I think it's the fastest, easiest way to be successful. Every agency I ever talked to prior to being a SaaSpreneur, having SaaSpreneurs and all that, local digital agencies always had low churn. I think it's because they're able to create a lot of continuity, a lot of trust, and they have a lot of connection to their community. And it's really hard to fight against that. If you're a dentist and you hired some guy in town, you know, maybe he's not a dental specific niche marketer, but the great thing is he'll head over to your dental clinic when you have a problem and sit down and actually walk through it with you. And man, that is worth a whole heck of a lot when the alternative is I got to pick up a phone and sit on hold and this and that and hope I get the help I need. And I'm dying here because the less time I'm putting my hands in someone's mouth, the less money I'm making. So I have this really big pressure to get back in the operatory and continue doing that. Otherwise the lights don't stay on. Mm. Yeah. The niche down of local is one that's, it's just not, it's not a sexy narrative. So people, nope. they're repelled by it, but gosh, man, and that 300 grand a year, that's so achievable. Exactly. It's so, and then from there, it's the corridor principle. From there, you identify the opportunity and then you chase that opportunity and then and then you can scale up. Yeah, it's like what I always tell people, it's not a limiting factor. Like call me on the day you get a hundred local clients and I'll show you how to, t- I'll t- I'll t- I'll show you how to take that to world domination. Um, but the number of people, you know, and what really actually convinced me is, uh, you know, it's not, not only talking to hundreds of local digital, I mean, thousands of agencies and then within that hundreds of local digital agencies. And I, and I always try to play the same trick on every like sales call. Essentially, I just say like, oh, well, you know, I bet you have a lot of churn and, you know, 99% of the, or whatever, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh yeah, how'd you know? But then the local guys, it just fall flat as a, a pancake. They'd be like, churn, what's that? And I'm yeah. like, oh, don't you ever have a client quit? And the, and, you know, and I get these weird responses like, well, I did have a guy actually, he was like, he was not, you know, he's like 85 and he passed away and his son or daughter didn't want to take the business. So I guess we had some clients leave. Like that's that response I get. I mean, kill me. Right. And so, um, so a, there's that stuff. And then I've come across people who were in really big niches and they were trying to do the Facebook ads thing and this and that. And I gave them the stupid advice of like, Oh, just go to your chamber of commerce and do this trick. And a couple of them were nutty enough to follow my advice. And I've subsequently followed up with them. And they're like, I'm like, how are things going? I'm like, it's amazing. <laughs> My life is radically changed. And it's simply because they're dealing with local businesses who they can connect with, who really appreciate them. And, uh, you know, they're being really successful as whereas before they were drowning. Dude, it's nuts. If you go to your local BNI, I don't even like BNI, by the way. Like I'm not- oh, yeah, Nobody opponent. likes this stuff. No. It just works. But yeah, if you wanted to start <laughs> something, roll up high level, go to your local BNI, help people install follow-up sequences in their business. That's it. Bam, totally. you have an agency. Totally. Yeah. I mean, always people always ask me like, oh, well, what feature? I'm like, miss call text back. I just, my favorite. I'm on because because you can tell the story. You're like, have you ever called a business and had them not pick up when you were trying to buy something? Yeah. All the time. Bingo. There you go. Right. There's your, there's your opportunity. Right. And how many of those, and I was like, how, and it's really easy to math. Like how many of those missed calls for a business do you think you need to turn into a customer to pay you 300 bucks a month? And for most businesses, it's about one, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe it's two, you know, the, the flower shop or something, maybe it's six. I'd, I probably wouldn't sell to the flower shop, although you can. Um, but, you know, again, for most businesses, it's one or two. And what do we know? We know these people miss like a hundred calls easy every month because people get calls all the time and they're out doing what they do. So it's very simple. And again, it's just not sexy, which is why it doesn't, you know, there are very few coaches that coach it and very few ads that pitch it because everyone's like, wait, that isn't that easy? And the answer is like, yeah, it is actually pretty easy. Uh, you ever play with a Swiss army pocket knife? Heck yeah, man. Who didn't have a Swiss army knife? All right, good. So I, I, I loved Swiss army knives as a kid. I used to collect them and 
uh, you get to a point to where there's a Swiss army knife that gets so thick, it doesn't fit in your pocket. Anymore. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, there's just too much shit on this. Yeah, 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 yeah. When do you cry uncle? Like, when does high level have too many features? It's unwieldy. It no longer fits in my pocket. Well, actually, okay. So, well, I mean, a couple of things. So from a practical standpoint as an agency, we're already there. So like uh, the biggest mistake people make coming in the door is they think they need to learn it all, right? And it's sort right. of like, it's exactly like that. I, I sort of say like, it's trying to eat the whale, right? You're just not going to. It's not going to work. So what you got to, so, so we're already there from that practical sense. Now, what's cool from, from a, from a feature standpoint on my end is I think that we are, I don't know, let's just say like big, big rocks, big rocks were small rocks, right? So big features, I'd say we're probably two quarters away after this quarter from, I mean, I'm, I'm probably missing something, but maybe let's just call it two quarters away from all the big rocks, um, basically where if you give me a business, I can show you how to run that business end to end from high level. Now things will come along, things will change. Like there'll be new social media networks or there'll be new forms of communication, this sure. or that, blah, blah, blah. But but we'll they'll add into an existing construct. And my goal, my mission is that for every like small business, medium business, like I'm talking the whatever, the 30 million small businesses in the United States, which is the vast majority of, of business, 80 million, 80, 80, what is it, 80 seven and a half percent or something, whatever it is, 90%, we can run those businesses in, in the app um, end to end. That's kind of the mission, right? Um, and there'll be some, like, like let's go back to the dentist example. I don't think we'll have that tooth picker thing <laughs> ever. <laughs> but yeah, the periodontal but, chart. Yeah, but I mean, I think at the end of the day, like that's, you know, I think that's probably where we'll leave off. But the nice thing is even there, to be honest though, I think this is why we have a great open API. And we love developers and integrations because I do think actually what will happen in a practical sense is we'll link up with medical EHRs and dental specific stuff and we'll help those people actually acquire customers. And the agencies, again, who are SaaSpreneurs will just plug two solutions together. And those are in very niche specific instances where we wouldn't want to play probably anyways. So I guess that's kind of the way I think about it. Mm. The the high level web builder, just out of curiosity, is that dead on the vine? Are you going to rebuild? Is that- We just came out with a brand new UI for it. You Did kidding? you? Heck when? yeah, man. Yeah. It's in, uh, you have to turn it on in labs and all that good stuff. No, actually, in fact, what's really cool about the builder is we've unified the experience. So the builder from, and you're seeing this roll out, but basically think about it like this, the builder uh, for the, e the email builder, the blog builder, uh, the website builder, the funnel builder, uh, and there's something else in there, memberships. Uh, proposals and estimates, all of those builders are all sort of essentially becoming a unified builder. So from a UI UX experience, they'll be the same. Obviously they have different components and this and that. Um, but yeah, we've radically upgraded that recently and we're kind of going through that motion right now and slowly deploying it out to various parts of the app. Dude, I gotta pay more attention. That was my only beef ever with the high level feature set is I just didn't yeah. like the web builder. Uh, now, now that like, you saw that the new problem. One. Yeah, yeah I'm all in now. I, I'm clearly, I need to join the cult. I'll get the shoes. That's right. You got to drink the Kool-Aid, man. Yeah. Uh, how do we help you, Sean? Somebody's watching this. They want to back the high level play. Become an affiliate is one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, so yeah, I'd say who, like, who are you and what do you want to do? Like, so do you know 50 a lot of percent of my, my audience are agencies? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, if you know, I mean, obviously the affiliate side is great. If you're, if you know other agencies, you should definitely affiliate. But if you're an agency, you should become a SaaSpreneur because, you know, what I would still say is, even outside of high level, quite frankly, I think if you look at the way the world is going, being a pure play service business is just tough. It, it's always been tough, but I think it continues to get tougher. And if anything, technology is very much against you. Like you could see like on the website side, right? There's all these people today that are doing like AI website builders, right? And today I'll be honest, they're terrible. Um, in my opinion, the ones I've seen, although ironically enough, of course, we're working on one too, but um, but the realities are going to get there, right? They're going to get good fast. Yeah, really good fast. And, you know, we've already rolled out, we just rolled out AI image creation uh, in high level. We already have AI copy. Um, we'll have an AI bot here actually at the end of this quarter, so in two weeks. Uh, so what are, what are we doing? We're arming, we're continuing to arm people with tools that help, and in our case, it's agencies, help them create things faster. But this really starts to grind back against the service business model anyways. So this is what I would say is like, really understand that and really figure out your solution. I would say, of course, become a SaaSpreneur because I'm biased, uh, but you need a model that is you're selling a box product. And if you're selling services and you're doing a lot of custom creation of stuff, ooh, watch out because I think AI has a, a big play there 
And I think eventually most businesses are gonna expect a fully built website with, with copy, with custom graphics and everything else all built in about 60 seconds, right. so just describing it into a, a box. And then if anything, I think they're gonna, we're gonna even go beyond that where you don't even have to know really how to describe it because someone else will somehow figure out how to help you do that as well. There's already and, prompt libraries for chat GPT where you, you can pay a exactly. couple bucks. For, yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so I think that's kind of where we head. And again, I still think that creates opportunity for agencies. It, it, it's just about selling a different product, right? And selling a product that is, and, and I don't think it, AI, and again, I don't think AI is a solve all for problems. It just solves some problems really well. Um, and I think it should make this model more efficient and better and easier because you can focus on the things that AI can't do, which is quite honestly, sitting down and helping people achieve things, not necessarily sitting at your desk, like drawing something in Photoshop or, you know, copywriting, copy Smith, you know, wordsmithing, there it is, wordsmithing something, or, you know what I mean? Like less of the, the old school, put it together kind of methodology that will just be automated. And then you can sort of focus on the more practical sense of, all right, we got the website. That's great. But now how do we get people to visit it? And what do we do when they get there? And how do we make sure that when they get there, that we capture them and then we automatically follow up with them and this and that. That's where the, I think, in, in my opinion, the future goes. Yeah. If you're watching this, I have my affiliate link in the description. So make sure you use my affiliate link. Absolutely. Uh, if you're going to share a link, make sure you share my affiliate link. That's right. <laughs> uh, Sean, you've got a big event coming up, right? Heck yeah. Well, we have, yeah. So we have actually a sold out event next week, but we have our, uh, our annual event in October. So it's the level up event. And it, what's fun about this event. So we did it for our first time last year and it was perfect. So we're not going to do anything different, which is we, we had, we sold out. So we're not going to increase capacity because that's good. And what we, what we, the way we did this event is really simple. We made it so that it's not about us. So the goal was, can we bring the most amazing uh, marketing sort of people to this event where it's like so, so many great speakers and so many great attendees that if you don't even know who we are or like us, you'll show up just, just for those people. And, and actually that's what happened this last year it was great. I met some people who were like, oh, I, I kind of had heard about you guys, but I didn't really know what you did. But then I found out so-and-so was going to be there. So I came and I was like, that's perfect. And it's small enough that whoever that big speaker is on stage, they're also going to be at the bar after the after their talk. Right. So you can actually meet them and talk to them and and have a meaningful conversation with them uh, versus some five thousand person event where you know those speakers just want to come in, do their thing, and get the heck out because it's a zoo anyways, and they're just not interested and it's not it's not cohesive and not fun. That's awesome. If people want to attend the event, where do they go? Uh, I don't know. Go high level, level up something, level up. We'll high have level a link level. in the description to that. Yeah, yeah. Too. Level up. Go down. high level.com. I just found it myself. It's October 23rd. So you have plenty of time to sign up. Yeah. I strongly recommend that. I've gotten more juice out of events than I think any other expenditure of a day. Um, cause wow. I mean, everybody's just there and they're primed, you know what I mean? They're kind of oh, in that, yeah. Hey, let's connect and be open and creative mode. Um, Sean, super appreciate you, man. Last words to you, sir. Yeah. Anything else you want to leave our, our subscribers with? No, I mean, I just think, I mean, I think it's an exciting time. I, I really do. I think there's a lot of opportunity out there. And I think that if you're um, you're an agency, it's a great it's a great opportunity because I think that AI, again, and these technologies are not limiting your growth. They're, they're improving your growth. It's just, you have to reimagine how your business works and realize that it's no longer about custom bespoke work, which you hated anyways, quite frankly, because that meant you couldn't go on vacation to a much more scalable model and being able to utilize things and tools that quite frankly, five minutes ago, weren't available to you, right? They were only available to people with a lot more money and a lot more funding, but now they're in your hands and you can do some amazing things with them. You just gave me a whole business idea as we're speaking. Um, man, I love talking to you, Sean. I get fired up. I, what's your diet like? What do you eat? Uh, it's just, I mean, random stuff. I mean, I, I mean, well, so as Let a me, kid, I just ate McDonald's. Like I was terrible. I'd eat, so I, would, I, so I'll walk you through it. I would eat a sausage egg McMuffin meal in the morning. And then two hours later, I'd walk back and I'd get another one. And then I would have Taco Bell for lunch and then Taco Bell for dinner. But that's just because I'm lazy. Um, but then eventually I started to get a little overweight. And so when I met my wife, lucky for me, um, she helped me change all that. But now I would say I live in Eugene, Oregon. We're a bunch of crunchy granola folks around here. So I eat a lot of like, uh, like beans and rice and avocados, a lot more vegetables than I used to a lot less meat than I used to. Um, but I don't really, I don't really ascribe to any specific particular diet. 
Where's where's your energy come from, dude? Because I've never not seen you exactly like this. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I get excited about what I'm doing. So, I mean, I would say like being part of this and watching change happen in the world and being able to be part of someone's story of that uh, to me is very exhilarating. And um, it's always what I hope to do in my life. And so, um, to you know, to be, I mean, it's, you know, it's not perfect every day. It has its ups, it has its downs, <laughs> um, you know, but at the same time, net, net, you, you, you just, you see so many people having really positive outcomes in their life because of something you're part of. And uh, I don't know, that's really pretty cool. And it kind of keeps you going. Yeah, that's inspiring. Uh, Sean Clark, the co-founder of Go High Level. Right. Always a pleasure, brother. I hope I get to have you back. And, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. If there's ever anything I can do for you, Sean, um, I feel like me and the rest of the entrepreneurial world owe you one. So <laughs> I don't think so. If you're watching, I shoot a video every day. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. One of the things that kills Google ad campaigns uh, has nothing to do with Google ads. It's people's absolute complete and total inability to sell stuff when they get in front of a customer, um, which is shocking to me still to this day. We track and record every single phone call that we catalyze inside of Google ads with client permission. And I cannot begin to tell you how embarrassing some of those phone calls are. They're unbelievable. So what I want to go over to